I dedicate my words to the heroes of Gaza, the mothers and fathers and children, the teachers and doctors and nurses who are proving every day and every hour that no fortified wall can imprison the free spirit of men, women, and children, and no form of violence can subdue life. I was asked to speak as an Israeli. So as an Israeli, I live in the same country the Palestinians live in, only on the other side of the wall. My country is a very small country where death has absolute dominion, where death has had dominion for too long. And yet the world, the whole wide world, is impotent against it. In the Jewish democracy of Israel, all human values have been long wiped off by the blood of innocent babes. Racist discourse is legitimate, and racist education is the only one allowed. Israeli children are raised on slogans such as love thy neighbor, while being trained to kill the neighbors and their neighbor's children, demolish their houses, torture their elders, and deprive their ill and their dying from medical help and care. Jewish mothers raise their children with all the love and attention Jewish mothers have. And yet they rejoice when their children turn into murderers and are proud when their children turn into corpses in uniform. The Jewish democracy of Israel, in the Jewish democracy of Israel, 324 children most of them kidnapped from their beds in the middle of the night by fully armed soldiers, are held in the inhumane conditions of the Israeli prisons. In the Jewish democracy, no one is ever punished for killing a Palestinian child. Israeli governments trade in human life and in human blood in a market where non-Jewish blood and bones are worth much less than Jewish ones. Israeli candidates who wish to be elected to the office of prime minister have to outscore their rivals in the killing of Palestinians and make grand promises to kill more and more and more. In the Israeli democracy, 20% of the population of the citizens are labeled in school books a demographic problem, a demographic threat, and a demographic nightmare. The, their language and culture, their rights and wishes, are practically erased from the face of the earth, both physically and symbolically. Israeli attitude towards its Palestinian non-citizens has found its most horrifying expression in the ongoing pogrom that is still being carried out by the thugs of the occupation army against the residents of the Gaza Strip. This is known to everyone, and yet the world is powerless against it. The people of Gaza are still locked up in this immense prison, hungry, unemployed, ill and poor, with no means to escape or to better their lives in any way. As an Israeli, it is very painful to me to realize that the world Israel has become the synonym to oppression, tyranny, ruthless apartheid, and racism. Just like it is very painful to me to see in rallies all over, the, all over Europe the Star of David equated with the swastika. Excuse me. I wish this tribunal will encourage people to arise and go to Gaza, the city of slaughter, or to any other city of oppression in Palestine, to see with their own eyes the ghettos in which these people are incarcerated, get married, have families, educate their children, and lead an impossible day-to-day -day life. I hope the free people of the world can have the courage to come to my country and defy all blockades and high walls 
and not give up until all barriers are broken and human dignity is restored. But the siege of Gaza is only one of many sieges imposed today in the world by democratic powers as well as by non-democratic ones. All these sieges are meant for one purpose, to silence the voice of freedom and justice. My co-laureate of the Sucker of Prize, Professor Izzat Ghazawi, a man of peace in spite of the inhuman blows he suffered, who died of humiliation less than two years after receiving his prestigious award, wrote to me just before his heart surrendered that he believed Israeli soldiers who came to his house every night to break furniture and frighten the children wanted, in fact, to silence his voice. I have vowed then, as I believe we should all vow today, to do everything within our power so that his and other such brave voices will not be silenced. When Jewish poet Bialik wrote after the pogrom against the Jews in Kishinev about 105 years ago, Satan has not yet created vengeance for the blood of a small child. It did not occur to him that the child might be a Palestinian child from the Holy Land and his slaughterers, Jewish soldiers. He could not imagine that a Jewish state would immerse all of us in the blood of little girls and boys up to our necks. Today, when the most enlightened civilizations support and commit the most heinous crimes out of greed, megalomania, and pure racism, Bialik's cry from 100 years ago resonates once again. And I, my heart is dead, no longer is there prayer on my lips. All strength is gone, and hope is no more. Until when? How much longer? Until when? Thank you. Every such action is, is, uh, is uh, beneficial. Uh, if, uh, I don't know, 100 people or 1,000 people will become engaged and will become involved and will become conscientious, that's enough. And you never, know what, you never know what will be, you know. When my father spoke about Palestinian state in the 70s, he was treated as traitor. And today everybody speaks of a Palestinian state. So maybe, you know, you, you put the seed and you never know what will grow. But of course, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that people come together and uh, fight for justice. For the time being, the Israeli state doesn't care about anything and uh, surely not for the public opinion of, of uh, Europeans. Uh, but maybe in the future, you never know, you never know.